Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending our program today. Welcome to the Virtual College Exploration. Please use your Q&A button to ask a question. Your camera and your microphone are off, um, but feel free to join us for more sessions at www.oacac.org and recordings will be available after this session too. Same website, oacac.org. I'm going to turn it over to Samantha from Slippery Rock and uh, welcome, thank you again. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us this evening. My name is Samantha Hervé and I'm one of the assistant directors at the um, undergraduate office or the undergraduate office of, at Slippery Rock University and I'm excited to share Slippery Rock with you today and um, take you on your college search process and just explain what the exciting opportunities that Slippery Rock has to offer um, and hopefully being able to help you find the perfect fit for you and the perfect home away from home. So. I always like to start off when I was doing my college search process, there was always a couple things that I was looking for in that search. One was location, um, definitely didn't want to be too far from home. So I actually grew up in Ohio, um, outside of Cleveland. So for me, my distance was about an hour and a half from home. Um, but I also was looking at a perfect size and a perfect fit. So Slippery Rock University is located in Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania. We are considered a public institution and we are one of the 14 PASHI schools and PASHI stands for your Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education. We are a total enrollment of just over 8,800 students with an undergraduate population of about 7,500. So during my college search, I knew I wanted something in that mid-size range and this is definitely that perfect fit for me. Um, it's that mid-sized school with a small school feel with an average class size of 25 students. Being able to interact and get to know my classmates as well as my professors was something that was very beneficial for me as I was going um, through my college experience and especially after graduation, being able to utilize those resources as connections and helping me navigate the job search after I graduated. Um, our location is about 50 miles north of Pittsburgh. We're also about 45 minutes um, from Youngstown, two hours from Cleveland, three hours from Columbus, and an hour south of Erie. So definitely a great location, especially when it's time to start searching for jobs and internships. You've got a lot of area, a lot of cities and suburbs to look for. During my college search process, I knew I wanted um, a university that felt like home and I wanted to be able to have that community feel. And Slippery Rock University definitely has that. The town itself is only about 3,000 people, but once the campus is in session, you are looking at about 10,000 people are now in the little town of Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania. Um, the community supports the university and the university supports the community. So you've got that nice home away from home feeling. During your college search process, you might also be looking at specific academic majors and academic areas, being able to um, search by university for a specific undergraduate program. So at Slippery Rock, we have over 150 different undergraduate programs to choose from. Um, anything that has to do with um, our College of Education, College of Business, we have a wonderful College of Health, Engineering, and Science, as well as our College of Liberal Arts. So lots to choose from. Um, lots of different opportunities to, to add different majors or double major and or add a minor within. If you're interested in continuing your education at a higher level, we have over 40 different graduate programs to choose from too, um, to be able to make sure that you are obtaining the best education that is fit for you. No matter what program, no matter what area you're in, every class you are going to be taken is going to be taught by a faculty member. There's no teaching assistants and there's no graduate assistants on campus. 92% of our faculty have PhDs or terminal degrees in their field. So you are going to be learning from the best of the best and all of them have some sort of field work and experience. They're going to be able to bring in that experience into the classroom as well to be able to provide that nice hands-on learning opportunities for you. Previously, I mentioned that we have over 40 different graduate programs. So these are some of our programs that we offer that we set you up where you were able to do your undergraduate schooling at SRU as well as continuing at that higher level. So the columns located here on this left hand side of the screen up to pre-counseling are graduate programs that we offer um, 
at that highest level, meaning that the green is your graduate program. Anything listed underneath that, this is your undergraduate program. So if you're interested in becoming a physical therapist at SRU, you have the opportunity to study one of these five programs here. And then at the end of your undergraduate years, still apply for graduate school to be able to go into our physical therapy program. So we have two options. We have your traditional track and your accelerated track. A traditional track is studying the undergraduate program, maybe in biology, for four years. At the end of your fourth year, you'll still then, um, you'll finish your undergraduate degree and go into grad school. Our programs are not direct programs, so you still have to apply into physical therapy school and be accepted to then complete your degree in physical therapy. So the traditional track, it would be four years plus another three years, meaning that's a seven-year program. Our accelerated track is going to be cutting a year off. So it's a three plus three program, three years undergrad, three years grad. Um, that means you have to study um, one of these areas that you're potentially interested in. So for example, again, biology, it would be biology for three years. At the beginning of your third year at the undergraduate level, that's when you apply into graduate school. Hopefully you're accepted into graduate school. That fourth year is a transition year, finishing up your undergraduate year, but then starting your grad school program as well. And then by the end of that sixth year, you would have earned an undergraduate and graduate degree in that physical therapy program. The programs from pre-chiropractic down, those are programs that we have affiliationships or partnerships with. Um, I'd be more than happy to specifically talk directly about any of those programs if anyone is interested in them. Um, at the end of this presentation, my email will be present where you can send me an email and or shoot me a, um, shoot the question in the chat as well. So we talked a little bit about majors and just your general feel for Slippery Rock, but one of my favorite things to talk about is getting involved at, in college. Um, being able to learn outside of the classroom, I think, is just as equally as important as learning what you're learning about your major in the classroom. We have over 160 different student organizations to get involved in, anything from your student government to athletics to um, maybe a spirit club and organization. There's so much going on that there's something for everybody. And I always encourage students to find one club and organization to get involved in that first week, that first two weeks um, while being on campus. It's a great way to step out of your comfort zone and a great way to meet new people. All of our student organizations have great leadership experience and opportunities as well. Every organization has some sort of executive board, so a president or a vice president. If you wanted to get further involved in those organizations, you could potentially become president or vice president of that organization, develop that leadership experience, develop um, your management style, and it's a great, um, great thing to be able to add to your resume. Something else I enjoy talking about is studying abroad, being able to travel. So learning outside of the country, learning it's a different culture. Our students have the ability to travel abroad in for a full semester. They can travel abroad and study abroad for a full year. And the most popular way our students study abroad is a 10 day spring break study abroad experience. So it's that 10 days over spring break that these programs are faculty led. So you get to go with a professor as well as your classmates to go to a whole nother country. Um, I did two of those programs when I was a student. I went my first year to um, Peru and I went with a leadership, um, a leadership organization on campus. We ended up visiting a local university and understood how that operated while over in, um, in South America as well as um, going to like Machu Picchu. So it was that nice cultural immersion too. Um, my second year I went, I went to Barcelona and that was with a business professor. So we went and checked out a bank while we were over there, as well as we got to go to the Olympic Village and to park well. So great experiences and great opportunities to be able to um, be involved outside of the classroom and potentially even studying abroad. We have over 17 NCAA Division II athletic sports. If you are interested in the varsity athletics, please make sure you're getting in contact with varsity coaches. They do all of their own recruiting. However, if you still wanna be involved in athletics, but not at that high level, we have club sports as well as intramural sports, being able to um, create a team with your friends and playing other teams on campus and or if you're in the club sports, being able to play other local universities that are um, within driving distance. 
Other ways of getting involved is our Honors College. Our Honors College is a great way to also challenge yourself academically. It is a separate application, so making sure you are going to the Honors website at sau.edu slash honors, completing the application, um, and going through that process to be able to get involved. And then there are tons of opportunities for community service, um, whether they're long-term, short-term, um, or getting involved in Greek life too. So there's always something for everyone. And like I said, definitely trying to find one club and organization to get involved within that first semester is a great way to meet new people and step out of your comfort zone. Living on campus is always um, the next step to kind of talk about and figuring out what's your best fit for you while living on campus. We do have a first year requirement that all first year students must live on campus. And after the first year, it's completely up to you whether you want to stay on campus um, or live off campus. But while within that first year, our students have two different opportunities and two different styles of housing. Your first style is a suite style housing um, and your second style is a traditional style housing. There are three major differences between these two options. The first major difference is cost. So a traditional style option is about $3,000 less per year than a suite style option is. Your second option or your second major, diff major difference is the bathroom. So a traditional style room is a community bathroom. So it's two people per room and you do have to leave your room to go down the hall to utilize the restroom and that is shared with others on the floor. Somebody does come in once or twice a day to clean that bathroom. Um, so it's a lot more sharing and caring. Your residential suite style room is more of like, I like to call it a hotel. Um, walking into the room and you have your own ensuite with two beds in the back. So this room is you and your roommate are only sharing that bathroom. So it's a little bit more in the sense of privacy. Um, both options are absolutely beautiful. Our traditional halls were all newly renovated. It's going to be personal preference and what you're most comfortable with in the opportunity of sharing and the sense of what type of restroom you're interested in utilizing. And then the third major difference is what we call a living learning community, an LLC for short. This is the opportunity of living in the same building, on the same floor, or in the same wing as others within your academic major. So living in um, one of our buildings for um, education majors. So being able to walk down the hall and find other students that are within your same major, within your same classes, great way to build study groups and great way to um, lean on each other for assistance if you need um, that extra help while going through your classes. Um, not required, but it is a great opportunity and something to think about. If you are interested in a living learning community, please keep in mind that living learning communities are only housed in suite style rooms. So you, you'll have to live in a suite style to be able to be involved in that living learning community. And the last thing I like to touch upon within housing is a roommate. So if you know somebody that's coming to campus and you wanna live with them, you can always request them on your housing application to be able to room with them, or you can always go random roommate, or you can always find somebody on a Facebook page and then request to live with them that way too. And lastly, we do allow all students to have cars on campus. It is $25 a year for a parking pass. I'm just making sure that you register your vehicle through our parking office and you're all set to go. When it comes to finding your perfect fit and your perfect university, um, I always like to say obviously getting involved, your majors, but also cost of attendance is going to be something that you're going to want to keep in mind. So this is a breakdown of a cost of attendance. Um, so your tuition fees is a flat rate across the board, no matter whether you're taking 12 or 18 credit hours. An average student takes 15 credit hours per semester. And one credit hour is typically the number of hours you are in class per week. So when I say an average student takes 15 credit hours a semester, that means they're typically in class for an average of 15 hours per week, which breaks down to about five classes. So each class is on average about three credit hours a, a week. Your room and board and then your total cost is going to depend whether you are in the suite style housing or the traditional hall housing. And with your room and board, your board is your meal plan. So every student um, starts off with a base meal plan of 12 meals per week and $445 of flex. What that means is you've got 12 meals a week. So every Monday morning you start at 12 and you have till Sunday night to utilize those 12 meals. 
If you don't use all 12 meals, no matter what, Monday morning comes around again, you're going to start back at 12. Whatever you don't use does get lost. And like I said, that's per week. Your $445 of flex, that is kind of like a debit credit card and or like a gift card. That money is automatically loaded onto your student ID. Every time you use that money, that money automatically gets deducted, but that money is per semester. So you have $445 to use in the first semester. Whatever you don't use will transfer to second semester, and whatever you don't use at the end of second semester does get lost. If you utilize, um, or if you use all of that flex prior to the first semester being over, you can always add more flex onto your account. Once you run out of meal swipes per week, you do have to wait till Monday morning and they'll automatically reset. There is another meal plan that it costs the exact same as this base meal plan with 15 meals a week and $255 of flex. Um, I always like to say it really just depends on your eating style. I always like to have my three meals a day. So I always had more meal swipes per day. So I was able to go into the main dining hall because I like to have breakfast every day. Um, my roommate through college, she liked to have her snacks throughout the day. So she always had the base meal plan because she was able to um, get her coffee uh, or a bagel and kind of take that on the go. As students from Ohio, we have two columns as well that I'd like to point out that talk about your out-of-state tuition. So your middle column is the column that says with a 3.0 GPA. This column means that if you graduate high school with a 3.0 GPA or higher, we award you what we call our tuition discount, which is again this middle column here. You do have to graduate with that 3.0 or higher to be able to receive this tuition discount. Um, the one on the far right hand side is without that 3.0. This is what your cost of tuition would be with a um, GPA below that 3.0 discount. We do create um, financial aid award letters for students and I always like to point out that when you first get your financial aid award letter, you are going to see this cost of tuition without that 3.0 GPA because this is only applied once a student graduates. So you will not see this change on a financial aid award letter until we've got your final high school transcript received. With cost of attendance always comes financial aid and scholarships. So these scholarships are offered to our students. Um, the biggest thing I always tell students is to apply early. So if you have not yet applied, we do encourage our students to apply prior to December 1st. If you apply prior to December 1st, you'll automatically be considered for these scholarships that are listed in the first three. Um, you can see the criteria that is already listed in this chart, but all you have to do is apply prior to December 1st and we automatically take your application into consideration. On top of that too, we have our Honors, Co Honors College Scholarship. So like I said, you do have to, previously you do have to still apply for an Honors College. If you apply prior to January 15th, we'll also automatically take that consideration, your application into consideration for an honor scholarship. Um, the honors college is a competitive, the honors college scholarships are competitive. Um, so just because you apply to the honors college does not mean you're automatically going to receive an honors college scholarship. And then last, we, we offer donor scholarships. This varies. Um, this is also a separate application. It takes all of five minutes. You do have to go to suu.edu slash scholarships to complete the online application. Um, that is open currently and it does close on February 28th. So making sure you get that submitted. We will then be able to go through that application and determine other scholarships that you could potentially be considered for. These scholarships are stackable. So as an out-of-state student, if you earn an out-of-state merit scholarship, you could also, um, also earn a donor scholarship or a uh, the honors college scholarship as well. So they are stackable. We also do take all outside scholarships too. So if you earn anything from your high school or your community, we'll take those scholarships as well. And lastly, regarding scholarships and financial aid, we do encourage all students to file the, the FAFSA, that free application for federal student aid. And this is also, once you file that, that also allows us to determine any need-based scholarships um, because those are also available to students too. Next steps are applying to SRU. And if you have not done so already, our steps to apply are fairly simple. Please go to sru.edu slash apply. It is an online application. It is a $30 application fee. And then we do need your official high school transcript. So please reaching out to your high school guidance counselor, asking them to send us your transcripts um, to our 
um, office for review. Um, Slippery Rock University from this point forward is test optional, so we do not require your SATs or your ACT test scores, and we just need that official high school transcript from your guidance counselor. Um, during our application process, we also do not require any um, recommendation letters and or essays. Um, if you do feel that you would benefit from submitting those, you can always send those to us as a separate attachment. There is not a place to upload those through our application. After you've been accepted to Slippery Rock and you think Slippery Rock is the best fit for you and your new home away from home, your next step is submitting a $90 enrollment deposit. I always like to say this $90 enrollment deposit is a domino effect. Once you submit this $90, it allows us to then create you a Slippery Rock email address, create you a Slippery Rock login information. Once orientation information becomes available, you'll receive communication regarding next, next steps of applying and signing up for orientation as well as once housing applications, which typically are available starting in February, those become available to you as well. Please keep in mind our housing, our housing application is a separate application. It also does require a separate um, application fee of $175. But once you submit that $90, that um, all this information will then be communicated to you from this point forward. Also keep in mind that our $90 enrollment deposit is fully refundable up to you up until May 1st of your senior year, unless you attend an orientation prior to May 1. I just wanna take this time to thank you so much for joining us this evening and allowing me to share Slippery Rock University with you. My contact information is listed on this slide. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, I'm more than happy to help with anything that I possibly can during your college search process. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to put them in the um, Q&A feature in the chat and I'd be more than happy to answer them. But have a great evening if not. Great, thank you again for joining us. And if you do have questions, you can feel free to reach out to Samantha. You can put a message in the chat um, and there will be a recording of this as well at oacac.org. You will get a quick survey. There's a four question survey um, that you'll get that we ask that you fill out. And thank you very, very much for being here. Take care, thank you. Thanks very much, Samantha. I just You're wanted to welcome. wait until he popped out. I think there was one student that attended. So I saw that. Woohoo! <laughs> perfect, perfect. You did a great job. <laughs> Thank you. It's always so weird. You never know what the. I know. But I know. I know. Well, have a great weekend and tomorrow's Thank Friday. You. Thank goodness. So yes. Great Thank to you meet so you. You as well. Enjoy the rest. I hope you guys make it the last week of school. Thank you. <laughs> have a good one. You Hopefully, I'll get to see you on the road sometime. Yes. I, okay. Hopefully. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.